This is an SM Media production. Hi everyone and welcome to the sixth episode of The Sit Down here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike and I'm delighted to be here again. This week I'm joined by a very special guest. I'm joined by the current Kilmarnock number seven and soon to be a, a lawyer, Rory McKenzie. Rory, thanks very much for coming on, mate. I'm delighted to have you on the show. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. Getting back to normal now with football. So it's, uh, well, not normal, but we're getting used to the the new normal way of playing, so it's not, it's not too bad. And what was the kind of reaction when you were told the kind of football was called off? Was it, did you see it coming or was it a big shock? Yeah, no, it was, it was a strange one. We, we, we trained on the Friday um, before St Mirren and uh, we just trained as normal. We got told halfway through the session that the game was off. Never did we think that we wouldn't kick a ball again for five months. So uh, it was obviously on the news, but we didn't, we didn't see you know, what, what, what eventually came. And what's been your kind of big takeaways for the, the situation? In terms of? Just in terms of basically fitness, things like that. Or was it hard to maintain uh, fitness during it? I think, no, not really. I think, I think at the start, it was, the start was actually quite good. You, you know, you get into a routine of, of, of doing your running. Um, you, you were trying, you, you'd win many records. You'd, you'd beat the Strava app and you're trying to beat your previous score for the first for the first eight weeks, it was actually, you know, it was quite, you were competitive within yourself, trying to beat scores, and then after that, the running became a bit uh, repetitive and stuff. But it was even, we have, we, it's strange, you just, you, I do anyway, and I know lots of the boys, you just hate doing nothing, so it's quite easy to, to maintain fitness, because without the running, we wouldn't do much anyway. Were all the players going to keep them in communication during that as well, like? Yeah, I, I just, we'd, 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 we'd Zoom calls and stuff like that, and, you know, Obviously, the way it go, you get groups of players that you talk to some more than others. But there was a, I at the start, at the start, not really. And then once things started, or we knew things were maybe going back, uh, or we're going back to train, we started to get involved a lot more together. Brilliant. As well as that, you're a you're a keen golfer as well. How was? Did you love the fact that golf had opened up again? You were back out playing. I could have done with a few more weeks off because the way it happened, the golf. The golf came back, well, obviously quite late on, but I think we, we went back to football maybe two or three weeks after that, so I could have done with another another two weeks just to try and melt the golf for the summer months a bit more, but no, it's been, the golf, the golf was good. I was just, maybe the last week um, we were off, I was starting, I, I was running out of things to do, so the golf was a welcome, a welcome, uh, a welcome sight. Brilliant. Just we'll start off. Just tell me a bit about your kind of early years, kind of family life, and growing up. When where did you grow up? I grew up in Trin. Trin. What yeah. was what was the kind of early life like with family and things like that? Was it good? Ah, that was great. We uh, I stayed just next to the golf course. Mum and dad still stay there in Trin, so we had not was superb. We had, we had a big green where we could play football. We had a golf course in the front, the doorstep basically. So in terms of growing up, I had everything there that I could could ever ask for. Um, never, never uh, ran out of things to do anyway. Brilliant. Uh, school life as well. What were you like at school? What was your favourite kind of subject? Uh, I was alright at school actually. Um, I've got a sort of half sensible head on my shoulders, so I went to junior primary and then went to Mar and stayed until fifth year. There was a few boys that I was with that, that left school to get asked to go in full time after fourth year, but we all, mum and dad, they weren't going to let me leave without without getting more than standard grade so I stayed on and, and did my hires um, and I'm very glad I did that. What was your kind of subjects? What subjects did you thrive in? Uh, I would say I thrived in many. Um, I, liked, I liked history. I'm a, I think my five hires were history, geography, P, maths and English so I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, history and I actually did, I quite liked English as well there. And P, I think everyone that did hire P got, got a decent score. Uh, early football memories as well. Like, what team did you kind of grow up supporting, and who were your kind of heroes growing up? Uh, I grew up. I grew up a Manchester United fan. Um, I, I had a few friends when I was younger that supported Man United, so we always had the we always had the strips. Um, and I think I think the 
don't know if you remember the Man United strip, it was the, the sort of the blue velvet, um, the blue velvet colour with the stripes, I think it was sharp. Yeah. And I had Beckham in the back of that one, so that's probably, as a Man United fan, there's my dog track coming. Uh, hey, hello. As a Man United fan, you know, David, I was, a, I was a big fan of David Beckham, as everyone was. Uh, what's your kind of early memories as well? Like going to get? Did you go go to any games when you were kind of growing up? Uh, I went. Not bad. I went. I, remember I went to. I think I went to my night in Middlesbrough. It was actually whether it was nil nil or one. It was. It was a. It was a. It was a poor game. But we had a nice weekend. We had a nice weekend away with my two brothers and my dad. So no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go to many. To many. Um, my night games, as you can imagine, but they were the. They were the they were the team growing up, and I was I always I don't know I always go along to Trim Juniors, but the, the local Trim game sometimes just with a few of my pals. But as far as my night games go, I wasn't I wasn't my big one for going. Brilliant. Uh, as well as that, like when you were starting off playing football, like did you go through kind of boys club and things like that? What kind of yeah, boys yeah, club? Yeah. Where were the boys clubs you played for? I started off at Caledonian. Oh, right, um, okay. Yes. It was Caledonian. Um, I started off at Caledonian um, and then moved on from Caledonian to, to Trun. I actually think at the time Trun didn't have, or my age group, there was nobody there to take my age group, so Caledonian was the closest team. So I played a few years there um, and then was with Trun Thistle all the way up until under 12s, I think. And then the way it worked out, loads of, loads of the boys from you know, Ayrshire, they went to Air United. Yeah. Um, so I went Air just like training a couple nights a week, and then Air sort of just the way it used to do back then. The, the coaches Air sort of molded into Kilmarnock. I don't think yeah. Air could find the, find the coaches, um, so all the boys eventually left and went to Kilmarnock. But I, um, I just liked playing with playing with my mates back then. I was so young that I just thought I wanted to go back and play with Trun. So I did a I did a year at Trun and then eventually signed uh, with Kilmarnock. Um, who was kind of scout? Who was kind of scouting you through then? Like who was the person that kind of picked you up? But do you remember? I'm actually not who. Sure. Willie, I played with uh, Willie's son Ross. I think he he did a bit to do Willie Fisher. Um, but there, was, there was there was loads of different around the at the time. Remember the Jim Bagan? Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, uh, he he had a lot to do with like you know the. the Young Ayrshire boys going in and training with Rangers and stuff like that. So there's a few local scouts at the time, but um, as far as names go, I can't really remember. Was there any other clubs looking at you? Was Comala always the, the team you were going to? As far I, I think I remember Hearts, but then it was a case of if you're 12 years old, are you going to go and train twice a week at Comarnock, or are you going to go through to Edinburgh three times a week? Yeah. So it was really a, a no brainer. For me, it didn't really matter. Obviously, for me, it wasn't. You know, a, a big issue, but for mum and dad, it would have been impossible to, to get through to Edinburgh three nights a week. And how important were your family kind of driving you to places? Oh, like uh, how big was that? Oh, it's, it's, I think everyone says it, but it's it's massive. They they're the one that sacrifices everything for you. They take you to they take you to games as, as you would, but it's you know it's it's a lot that when you're especially you know as you get sort of pro youth, there's it's. It's, it's even worse now, but back then it was three nights a week, game, you're travelling all over Scotland, it's, it's, it's a big ask, but um, no, they were, they were massive and all my decisions, even, even not going into full-time, um, when everyone else was going in full-time and staying on and, and, and getting, getting some good grades, I think I'll look back on that as, a, as, as a, it, was, it was an important decision to make. Brilliant. Uh, who was kind of coming through at the same time as you? Because there was quite a few players I remember, you kind know. of. Locally, uh, coming through. Uh, you. At, at Kilmarnock? Yeah. Yeah, there was, we, we'd, in the end, there was, there was, as a, we had Ross Davidson, I think, was dealing with the one, he's now playing at East Fife. We came through, we were in the same age group, but this, at our under 19s, I think, we'd, we'd, we'd a decent, we'd a decent squad. A lot of the boys are still playing. So we had Chrissy Johnson, Matt Kennedy, uh, Craig Slayer, Lee Ashcroft still playing, Mark O'Hara. Yeah, uh, we'd we we'd, we'd a really we'd a really good team. We we got to the youth cup semi final, but we're beating the Celtic. So we had we had a lot of boys. I think I think in our youth cup game we had a, we had in one of the games I think we had nine out of the eleven that played in the first team, which was you know the time Kilmarnock had no money with Kenny Shields who would just love flinging young boys in. So we were 
coming through at that time, we were really lucky. Yeah. And as well as Al, as you say there about Kenny Shields, but who was kind of the youth coaches coming, can I guide you through? Uh, oh, there, was, there were so many. Um, you know, Alan Robertson was one under 19s, but so many good youth coaches at the time. Uh, Craig and Rab and uh, Andy Black and stuff. But Alan Robertson, he was the under 19s coach. Um, he was he was great to us all. Um, I think if you ask anyone that came through at Kilmarnock, um, Alan Robertson would always put the, the boys ahead of himself and did a lot for us all. Brilliant. Uh, what do you think you were like as a youth player? Do you think you're, were you always a right winger or did you kind of play in any other positions? I actually always played up front when right. I was in the youth team. Um, I, I was, you know, I was just a stick arm, just, you know, a hard worker. Um, I think at the time you were, you know, you're coming through that age, I was running a bit like a up front. So I played under 19. It was actually until, I think I, the first game I played for Kilmarnock was up front when I was about 17, 18. Um, so, just sort of changed as somebody that can, can run about all day and just sort of move towards the, the wider areas of the pitch. Yeah. Uh, can I make can I, your youth career? You can add, how long were you playing, can I? Comarlet? Was that Comarlet youth team? Was that about two or three years before you got into the first team? Uh, well, I was with Comarlet since under 13s. Right. Um, and then went full time at 17, or six, uh, seven, just turned 17, I think. And then went out on loan, did the two years, went out on loan at 18 to Brecon. And then that, that, that made, my, made my debut at 17. Um, but then, was it 17? Yeah, I made my debut at 17 and then went out on loan uh, at the end of the season. When you made your kind of debut, what was the, the feeling like? Was that nerves or was it scary? Yes. <laughs> You always remember the game. I can't. I can't really feel so long ago. No, you can't really. I can't really remember coming on. I think the big thing I took away from it was Eremenko. He'd. I can't remember. He shouted something. I think it was like last half hour of a game. So I'd obviously never played, and you, know, you get that. You get like half an hour where for the first five minutes you cannot because it's still. It's only sixty minutes in. So the game's still going. You just cannot get a breath, and I'd never played a game, so I was I was all over the place. Um, and I, I remember Eremenko shouting. I can't I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't think it was pleasant. <laughs> so I just think, no, no. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? But after that, after that, it was it was funny enough because I would, you know, if it was if it was me, I'd probably be shouting something similar. What was he like as a player, Eremenko? Oh, he, he was he was great. The, uh, yeah, played with them a couple of times. But I, 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 I say I came on, but I didn't play the rest of the season. I think that was his best season for Kilmarnock uh, under Mixu. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a joy to watch. And then when he came back the next time, you could still see he was a bit older, but he still had the, the, the same quality, just on the ball. I don't think he's as good as he's as good good a player as I played with, and you know his career says that as well. Was did Mixu pal and give you a debut? Yeah. No, he actually. I was on the. I made the bench a couple of times um, and then he actually got the Finland job. Right. And I made my debut the following week. I think the week after he left, um, I made my debut. So it was Kenny Shields. It was under Kenny Shields. And what were your kind of early first team experiences like? Was it hard, like, obviously you're kind of a young boy making your debut. Is it hard, obviously, to have the kind of sporadic appearances at the beginning? Was it hard, hard to kind of find your feet at first? I think I think at first you're just you know you're that you're that pleased to be there that you're not really you know whether you come on or not it's just great to be a part it's just great to be in the dressing room it's great to be sitting on the bench watching the game from from the bench um, but I think after that initial period you know you're still sitting there and you're you're coming on for five minutes you get that you get the taste of it yeah because youth youth team football is great and it gives you it gives you you know the base are just they give you an introduction to to full time football, but it's just it's a million million miles away from what it's actually like. You know you're not playing for anything. There's no there's nothing on the games. You can take chances here. Nobody's going to say anything to you. But once you get into you know real changing room with men, it becomes real all of a sudden, and they'll tell you just as fast. So I think once you get the taste of that, it was just so addictive that you know I just felt that for me. I had to go out and and experience that at a lower level because I wasn't ready to, to play to play for Kilmarnock at the time. 
And as well as that, like, who were the kind of characters in that team and what were they kind of like with you for advice and things like that? Uh, we had quite a few characters. We had Pascali, um, Gary Harkins. Uh, we had... Uh, well, we'd, there was... Uh, that was with, with Fow, James Fowler. He's now working at Kilmarnock. Yeah. There was, that was a... That was a, it was a good it was a good changing room and for a young boy to come into the Jamie Hamill actually Tim Clancy just boys that you know just to experience like their sort of banter at a young age was was uh, was was really good fun. Brilliant. Uh, you went on. On you go. No, on you go. Sorry. <laughs> Advice wise, you just you're not really at that age. You just want to you just soak everything in. So you're not you're not really asking anything. You're just trying to. Take everything, listen into everything they're saying, and try, try to get on board. Also, at the time as well, look, come on, we're kind of struggling, kind of, kind of borderline, kind of bottom six. Was there a kind of a worry at the time that things were kind of going wrong? Do you remember? Uh, not, not that I can ever remember. Um, oh, there, there, there were certain times, you know, a few years later when you were playing, and you know, we had to go to Hibs in the last day of the season and get a result. Yeah, at the time. No, at the time, you know, we were we were doing okay under Kenny. Just missed out in the top six, and then a few years later under Alan Johnson and stuff, we struggled a bit. But um, no, I think even the, talking about that before the year before I went in full time was the year Kilmarnock won or drew nil nil in the last day against Falkirk to stay up. So that That's was right, yeah. that a worry because we were we were gonna we were gonna in full time, and we didn't know what would happen if Kilmarnock went down. Then there was obviously big financial issues. Um, everyone knew about so if, if Kilmarnock had gone down then but they had scrapped the youth system so that was as a, as worries goes that was that was uh, that was a relief when we eventually stayed up that day Obviously when you were kind of going loan to breaking as you said earlier like how did that move come about and was it more to was it obviously to get kind of first team football and that kind of experience Yeah um, I think I think obviously lower lower league play, lower league managers are looking for you know, young boys that come on and will still pay your wages, so it's just a free hit for them. You know, yeah. if it doesn't work, you can send them back, and if it does, then great. And I think Jim Weir contacted our under 19s manager and said, Look, Would he fancy it? And you know, as soon as they got the call, it where's breaking? That's a bit, <laughs> bit, really, you know, I'd, I'd gone from all you can't, can't go to hearts because you can't travel, but it was different then. Like, you, I didn't care. I didn't care that it was two and a half hours away, or however long it was, because you were going to play football and real men's football. Um, and it, 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 as soon as, as soon as I heard about it, I was, I was straight on it. There was loads of games where breaking is. Obviously, loads of games had been cancelled in November and December. So yeah. I think I, in February, and there was just it was just games, just Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Or sorry, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday for the, the whole season. It was just it was just the best experience ever. No, but what did you kind of learn for there? Like, just what was the big kind of takeaways? Just how you know these boys. These boys are they're, they're working. The boys out. It was obviously part time, so they're they're working every day. They're going to play, and they're making. You know, they were they were playing for win bonuses. We we'd never had that. At Come on, yeah. it means a lot to their. They're there. They're they're trying to make money, and at the time, you don't you don't think about that, but it's. And they, they take it so seriously. Always knew that would have been the case, but it was just all of a sudden where it didn't matter on a, on a Saturday morning for the under 19s. At the time, it mattered to you, but it didn't really. Yeah. All of a sudden, with these, with these men that just want to win so much, they're, some of them have played at a really high level and dropped down for one reason or another. So they're all, they're all so much better than I thought they would be. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was just a, as a, just a young boy going into a changing room. It's just, you just, you just, you just love it. It's just you knew that's what you wanted to do, and it was. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of good guys. I was lucky at the time. You know, some some loans don't work out. Some, a few of the boys I played with, loans didn't work out. But it just everything seemed to fit quite right uh, at Brecon. Brilliant. Uh, did you kind of feel it was a big success? And you know, you obviously played through. Did you play? You played kind of striker at there, didn't you? Like, and you were getting getting a few yeah, goals. I, I, I played. I played on the right. Um, right. So I think it's. I think we played 17 games, uh, scored eight. I think it was eight goals at the time. It was honestly, it was it was just it was probably the best experience I've ever had. It's the most enjoyment I, I, I can remember having. Just the the first 
real football I was playing and um, I got off to a good start. I scored the, the winner in my second game and then after that, because because of the good start, you just felt so confident and I got on really well with the lads, got on really well with the manager. You know, I was, the, the first day I was, I think the third, fourth game in, the striker, uh, Paul McManus got injured. You know, I had, were, we won a penalty, they came over to me and, you know, I'm not what, I'm never one to step forward and, and give it this, give it that, but they, they handed the ball to me. So it was just a, it was a, you know, a big confidence boost knowing that, you know, they trusted me and, you know, in the end, again, we struggled. We had to win or we had to get a point with two games to go and we, we drew two each against Cowden and Beeson. I scored two and, um, you know, that, 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 that kept us up and it was just, it was just, a, just a great experience. Do you feel it was, do you feel you went into Kilmarnock back to Kilmarnock a stronger player? Oh, definitely. Just know, just knowing how to play the game, having play, having been kicked about, having you know travelled to different places, different sort of football, bigger, bigger guys, experienced guys, better players than I was playing against the youth team. Yeah. You went back and you went back, having back with you know a lot of confidence after 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 doing well at Brecon. Yeah, as well as I, you went back to Kilmarnock just, was it after, just after the, the cup win? Uh, yeah, it would have been, it would have been. Do you yeah. remember, do you, can I remember being, were you, were you there that day? Or? Yeah, yeah, we, we were there, all, all the youth team boys at the time were there and it was just, you know, it was great, I, I, I knew Kilmarnock fans that openly said they weren't going because they knew, it was, they knew, they knew they would lose the game, so it, it was just, it was crazy, you know, just the way... We were we were actually down where the players celebrate. We were right in that corner. I remember early doors, the chances or the the square pass Sissoko gave and Cammy Bell save and you know you know yourself as when games go go like that and the keepers making saves, you just think you know this is this is this is going to happen here. And then the, you know we were right next to the cross and the head and goal. And it was just a, it was it was a great day for the club. And the time you're not even you're not even thinking oh you know I'm out alone here, but it was just. You felt part of it. We were in on the Monday, and you just felt a, a massive part of it. it. Was that was that was Sunday? Brilliant. Uh, obviously, when you go back to Kilmarnock, kind of Kenny Shields gives you a kind of run in the team. How important was he for your development and things like that? He was he was massive. He was the first the first manager that gave you the real gave you a chance to play. Um, as I said earlier, Kilmarnock had no money, and Kenny was more than willing to to throw young boys in and to be honest looking back at it where, where some of us ready probably not and yeah. results maybe suffered from it but it gave it gave everyone you know, experience and I think we we benefited from that in years to come but no, Kenny Kenny was massive not just to me but to a lot of the boys the young boys coming through yeah one of the kind of big games you kind of played in after that you went to Park Edway come on and won 2 now against Celtic what was your kind of memories for that day because you played really well and I remember kind of, you were getting a lot of plaudits that game how well you played yeah it's, it's that it's because I've been asked this I've just been asked this you, you realise how how long ago it was because you, you, you sort of forget but I just remember was it Fow maybe get injured at right back and I just remember them bringing Mark O'Hara and then shaping up the day before I think Mark was 16 right I was 17 or 18, I would add him in 18, just thinking, oh, like this is like going to Parkhead with two kids on the right hand side, it's going to be, it's going to be tough and I don't remember much about the game, I remember Killian's, I, I can actually remember Killian's goal, Killian Sheridan's goal, their mistake, but you didn't realise until that, you know, we get, we get, we, uh, we get, we, um, we things made up with, with, with pictures from the day, um, and, you know the result on it, and it, I think it was like 54 years since Kilmarnock had won there. So it's not until yeah. after you realised that you know it was a big achievement. I don't think we've even since, and that's with much much better teams. I don't yeah. think we've we've won there since. So it was it, it was a big achievement for the club, especially, and to be able to do it at such a young age was was great. Mm -hmm. So when you're just playing against players like that, like who kind of sticks out in your mind as like players who were just at a quality level, like. I, I always remember playing like Gary Hooper. Gary, I don't know why Gary Hooper just sticks in my mind. I don't know whether it was a turn or something. Just the, it was more so that his strength as well. I remember I tried to close him down in the box and ran over, and it was just a case of just, just, just stay. You're not, you're not going. It was like off. Um, and just obviously it's Rangers and Celtic. They're the, they're the guys that are streets ahead of, 
of most, but when just when you I just it's it's sometimes the size that you just struggle to like when Yama and Van Dyke, like it's just it's just their pure size. Yeah. Just standing next to them going, they're just they're just their physique is just so different. So you can you can tell that that's why they go on and they play at the highest level. They've got the ability, but they've also got that physique where they're six four. They can sprint, they can they can hit, they can just do everything. That's that's what strikes you more than on the pitch, just looking at them going, what chance. Yeah, and as well as that, you can get a good couple of goals. You got a double against the United as well. Like, was that a game that sticks out? Is that was your first kind of big, big goals for Coman? Do you remember that game? Aye, I, I, I remember Paul Heff. I don't. It's weird the things you remember. I just remember Paul Heff and breaking his collarbone the week before and thinking I'm going to play. So no, it was nice to get off to a good start. And you know, whenever you can, it's it's obviously a confidence booster, scoring early um, and playing well. And it was just. You don't. You're that young at the time. You just think it's it's always going to be like that. And it's always going to be great. But there was there was much much tougher times ahead. Yeah. Obviously, when you're saying that, kind of Kenny Shields leaves. Like, do you, do you remember kind of how that ended for him? Because it was. I remember at the time it was pretty weird because it was obviously won a cup, but it was a pretty you know ended up in a pretty bad exit, didn't it? Yeah, I, I was actually in Cyprus at the time, and I remember reading it, and I thought I, even now I can't really. You probably haven't read it. I, I, it was a wee bit strange, um, just in the middle of the summer, the, time, the timing of it. Um, I, but, you know, come on, maybe maybe not then, but I certainly became more accustomed to, to different managers after that. Do you think you've done pretty well, though, in your spell? Like... When was the last time a come on, manager went to, to win a cup, to, to bring the boys through, to miss out just on a top six? I think, you know, you're creating your... It'd be mad to say he didn't do well. Yeah. To, to win a cup at Kilmarnock is something that you know I yeah I really want to experience, and I'm not really been all that close to it. So to say it wasn't a success is is pretty silly if you ask me. Yeah. Alan Johnson comes in. Like, what was your kind of first interactions with him, and did he kind of give you a kind of good run in the team? Yeah, I played a lot under Alan Johnson. Um, he was, you know, and yeah, I had. I, we had, we had, we actually started that season really well with that uh, Alan Johnson. I think we were set. We, were, we went on a crazy run. We were second. Um, I think around about maybe maybe October November, and then we just had a brick wall and seriously a brick wall and lost a fair few games in the spin. And you know, tell me, if I'm, I think that was maybe the season we we ended up going to Hibs and. And, and having to win in the last day, so it was, that was that was a crazy season. How you went from so good to to just wow, just falling off a cliff and, and really really struggling, just just staying up in there. And when you can, have, you said there about the start of the season. Like, do you feel obviously going for the start of the season and then kind of race results going a kind of different way? Do you feel that pressure from the fans as much when you do, do you notice it straight away when things are kind of going wrong? I think because we've been doing so well, you know, at first it was, ah, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And then, you know, four or five weeks later, you've lost five in the bounce. And then all of a sudden it starts to get tight and teams below you are winning and things change so quickly. So I definitely, and did you're you keep, losing games. Yeah. Did you keep a kind of solid run in the team as well? Like, were you playing a lot? As far as, as, far as, I, rem- as, far as I remember, yeah. Um, I think I played... Played quite a bit that season, obviously in and out at times. But as far as I remember, I played I played quite a few games that season. Yeah, obviously you stay up as well as that. And Chris Boyd comes in. Just talk about how how much your character and influence Chris Boyd has on you. I well, he's, I played golf with him on a couple of days ago, so he still he, he didn't uh, give me much of it. I was I was his partner in the doubles game, so. I'm, uh, he's still not in the good books because he, he was really poor, so I'm not going to praise him too much. Are you the better uh, golfer? It's not even. And that, <laughs> like, I think you could pluck anyone from the street and they'd be a better boy there, uh, golfer than boy. He's, uh, <laughs> it wasn't his finest, his finest round of golf, but no, boy, he's been a great, he's been a really good friend to me um, ever since I first, first, first met him, first played with him. Um, you know, we we've, we've become really close, and he was just a. It's just this. His finishing was just. You see, you see strikers in training that you know, sometimes they don't they don't hit it that well. They they, they drag it. They, they they 
clip it in the end, but it just always found the net. It was just, it was just so strange that he was just such a natural finisher. Yeah. That no matter what way he struck it, it would find the net somehow. And he was, he was a massive, he was a massive character in the changing room. A really, a really good guy to have around the place. Would you say he was the best striker you played with? Oh yeah, definitely. In terms of in terms of goals, just just a it's just it's, it's just a pure finisher and um, just movement. I don't think people realise that his, his movement around the box, his movement off the defenders. You know, they, they, people say, oh, he doesn't move. He doesn't. He just stands in the box." But if you really look closely, his movement when the ball was wide is just as good as I've ever seen. He was he was probably the sharpest over two or three yards that, that I've seen. Yeah. yeah. How important was he for Kilmarnock to kind of get, you know, he was top, was the top goal scorer that season, the season after? Yeah. Like, how important was he scoring? Things like that. Just his... No, he, he single-handedly kept us up that year against Hibs. Not, not just his goal on the last day against Hibs, but I think yeah. 22 goals and a struggling team, he, he single-handedly kept us in the league that year. Um, I think it was after that he was moved to Rangers, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but he was, he, was a, he was the major you know, the major force in our team that year. Yeah. You come through as well when you kind of play in the, the Scotland under-21s as well and kind of one of the big games that will probably stick in your mind is uh, the 6-1 game against Holland. Do you remember that game? I I remember watching it from the side. Um, we actually started that game really well. It was because that game was, the season had finished and then the Holland game was, was 10 days after. So in, in your head, you're just oh, my God, look, you're sort of thinking, right, just nothing stupid here, your holidays, but not, let's not, nothing daft. Um, and it was, no, it was good because we, we, we had a lot of good players, Stuart Armstrong. So I, we started that game really, really well. And then they just, they just had that much quality. It was just a non-contest yeah. in the end. Two of the players that scored in that game were Hakim Ziyech and Quincy Promes. Obviously, they went on to have kind of great careers. Did Ziyech play that game? Ziyech scored two, yeah. Did he? Yeah. Jeez, oh. I, didn't, I didn't even know that. Wow. But uh, obviously, like, I, are they just a different level, like, the Dutch compared to yours back then? I, again, it's just that like, there was, what, I think a few days before we trained on the pitch and then they came off the pitch as we were going and it, it's just that, it's just the, the size. Like, I know, I, Gordon Strachan got absolutely hammered a few years ago for his genetics comment and how Scotland are small. But when you walk past some of these boys, it's just, it's out of this world, just the difference in size and shape of some of these guys. Like just uh, uh, Marco Van Hinkle played, right. um, the boy at Chelsea, and he was a certain midfielder, and he's just he's six foot three, and you're just going, Oof. and that, that, that doesn't win you games, but when you get quality as well as that, yeah. after that, I came on, I think I came on for like, 25 minutes or something and one of the first things I had to do was the goal he kicked it on my side and it was Nathan Ake yeah right and okay I went up for a header with Nathan Ake and just bounced off him but so it was just like they've just got they'd so they'd so much they were so strong so quick and, and just just very very good players and obviously they were very good players because I didn't realise he was playing and, and Quincy Quincy promises he it he, he just got a big. He went to Russia. I think he's back in front. He's uh, back at Ajax. Yeah, he scored a hat trick. He scored a hat trick. Uh, I, I remember him. I remember him. Um, so I, it just shows you, you know, they're getting moves for 30, 40 million. So they obviously have a decent team. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's crazy. It's crazy to look at and like because that's a decent squad team. There's players like Callum McGregor, as you said, like Stuart Armstrong, yeah. John McGinn's in it. That's that's a pretty decent squad team. Like, can you yeah. see with? Do you see with players like them, like McGregor, Armstrong, McGinn, like they obviously go for big money, but do you see then the potential they've got? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, Cal McGregor was all, I played against Cal McGregor the whole way through the youth team, and he was always he was always very good. But you've got to praise him as well. He, at the time, he went out and loaned to Notts County, and yeah, you know, did really well down there, and then broke into the Celtic team, and he, he always had, he always had loads of quality. And you can see the quality Stuart Armstrong had, and Kenny McLean. He was in the team as well. I remember training with him, realizing how good he was. So you know, we we die. I'm speaking about the Holland boys, but we had, we had a lot of good talent ourselves. Yeah, uh, Gary Lott comes into Kilmarnock. What was your kind of first memories of having, like when he comes into Kilmarnock? 
he was he was assistant to Alan Johnson, so he was he was always a good manager. He was always a good guy. You, I don't know if you know him, but he's 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 a, he's a good guy to have around. He was a good number two. We keep keep you upbeat. He was he was a good coach. Um, so I it was it was quite seamless him coming in. I think you know it was it was a weird one having him being so you know like like your like your pal like the go to guy to talk to all of a sudden the manager. Um, it was it was it was quite hard to find the balance. Uh, and I don't know how I, I I don't think he lasted how long today. I was about six months or something. It was pretty. It, 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 it was it was it was difficult. Um, it was difficult. But I, I actually I got on really well with, with Gary Lock because he was a good guy, and you know for one reason or another it didn't it didn't work out. And do you like when Gary Locke's there? Like obviously, do you think when Alan Johnson leaves and Gary Locke comes in, like do you, how do you see that progression from num- from a number two into a manager? How do you kind of find the difference with them as a when they go into kind of the, the bigger role? They have to, they have to, they have to, just, you know, take a step back in that sense that, you know, the number two, sometimes you don't want to go and speak to the manager. You want to, you'd rather, if, you know, if you're not playing, pull the assistant manager and just sort of put the seat in his head instead of going and chapping the door because sometimes you don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so being that guy that you can go and talk to to all of a sudden being the manager is, you know, I've said things before. Now he's the manager. What was he going to think? Um, so it's not. It's it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. And um, Alex Dyer just now he's done it, and you know he's doing a really good job finding finding the balance. Yeah. Gary Locke doesn't really work out, and Lee Clark comes in. Mm-hmm. What was Lee Clark like as a as a figure? Because he done pretty he had a pretty good playing career, but yeah, a manager. What was he like? Uh, uh, yeah, he was demanding, very demanding. Um, completely changed the the way of training. We'd we'd been like every other. We trained in at half nine, trained at half ten, and when Lee Clark came in, we were in at half one, trained at three. So right. that that took a bit of getting that took a bit of getting used to. Um, we, we, his idea was you train at the same time you play on a Saturday, or so even if we played on a Tuesday at half, quarter to eight, we'd be in on a Sunday at half six, training at quarter to eight. And on the Monday during the quarter days, so that was that was that was took a lot of getting used to. That was that was quite difficult to get your head around. But like anything, as soon as as soon as a few weeks go past, it's crazy how you adapt to it. Um, and Lee Clark, he had a, he was he had a Larry Laura about him. He didn't un, unlike Gary Locke in that sense, where you you knew it was like he would have a laugh. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't do that with Lee Clark. Like he yeah. had that sort of passion. That, the, the corridor and you're oof, just I'll, I'll 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 take a step back. Um so in terms of a manager I think he was really good but just you know certain things he was he um uh, but certain certain things like uh, you know there was a I, I saw him lose his head a few times. It was he had he had he had a fair bit about him. I, I, I quite liked Lee Clark but in the end um you know it did, it did just I think just the whole three o'clock, you know, guys with sometimes guys with guys with kids like we Jamie McDonald who who would, who would usually pick us. You they would go and pick up their kids at half three from school, having done that for twelve years of their career, to all of a sudden have their wives change their hours. So it, yeah. it, it, it took a, a lot of the boys didn't really enjoy it, and whether that had anything to do with you know the way it panned out for certain players. But for me, it was I stayed five minutes away. It didn't. It didn't really matter to me, but Lee, Lee Clark, you know, he did well. That obviously the Falkirk game, that was a big highlight. Yeah. Uh, in the playoff, and you know, he 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 got moved. He got moved to Burnley in the end. So yeah. I think when he left, we're inside the top six. So what what he did, what he did worked, and um, you know, fair play to him. I don't know, if he's out of work now, but um, I actually I actually got on not too bad with him. And see when he's kind of coming in, and he's obviously when he comes in, he brings a lot of English players in. Like, see when you he starts doing that, do you kind of worry for your place? And there are a lot of players in the same boat, kind of worrying about if they're going to still be there. I think you. I think with football, you've always got that. Not not a worry, just like a. You, you, they're always you're always they're always the clubs always look for somebody better, somebody that can can do a job better. So no matter who they're bringing in, you know there's going to be competition. Um, but that 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 was. 
that was a strain. I think we signed 14 or 15 players. Yeah. So that was a massive. Kilmarnock's always a club that the squad changes, or before it was, when I'd come through, it was, there was always huge changes every year. But that was a real, uh, you know, to sign 15 boys. And you know, to be fair, a few, of them, a few of them did pretty well. There was a lot that, you know, that didn't, that didn't end up playing. But it was, it was a strange one um, to get your head around. So many, so many new lads coming. Did he bring in Julian Fowler? He did. He did. Yeah. yeah. See when you're see when you're told that you're playing with a, with a player that used to play with Real Madrid come in. What's the kind of feeling with that? Like I know he didn't do well at Real Madrid, but <laughs> is there that feeling of when a guy like that comes in, his club, like his career, like playing playing with players like that? Is he can any stories to tell you? Like think. And, um, I was, you know, you'd always, you would ask questions about Madrid, you would ask questions about West Ham, and um, I always remember something, something he said, like, he, he, he claimed, whether it's true or not, he claimed that Real Madrid players only get paid twice a year. He said they get paid at the end of June and the end of December. <laughs> so whether there's any truth in that, but it's just wee things like that you, you enjoy hearing, you enjoy, but that's at a level that's just... You know, they're the guys that aren't even playing the same sport, but it's just a completely different way of life for them. So to hear we we snippets like that, it's quite it's, it's quite good fun. I mean, you touched on the the Falkirk game there. Like that was kind of the, the probably the make or break game for Kumama. Like what was that to like to be a part of? Just securing safety and basically it was a kind of game that's gonna save the club when you kind of look at it in hindsight. But how was that feeling yeah. then? Oh, it was a really strange one because with the first leg against Falkirk, we absolutely battered them. Yeah, um, and lost the game one 0 with a, a late free kick. A late free kick. Um, so that was having lost. I think I think at the back of my mind, we'd, we'd played so or we'd done all right. The first game, we'd cre- create loads of chances. We knew they'd go go and take them back to Rugby Park, but you know we felt we'd a, we'd a really good chance. But there was always that you know playing a game like that, having to stay up. It's not like playing a cup final where you've you've won games and. You've done well to get to that cup final. We were playing in that our mini cup final because we'd lost so many games. Yeah. So it was a weird one to get your head around. And then you're you're celebrating after, which I don't agree with. You know, we're celebrating winning a game because we've lost so many games during the season. Um, but it was a, you know, it's obviously massive, massive to win it and to stay in the league. Uh, Lee Clark obviously leaves, and Lee McCulloch comes in as well. Lee McCulloch, obviously, the very storied playing career. Yeah, what was he like as a figure in the dressing room? Because he comes in first as a player, and then obviously I think he can engine yeah. the better of him. But what was he like uh, as an influence to you? Eh, uh, Lee was Lee was good. He had a, like his playing days. He had a real, you know, he wanted everyone to work hard. He'd, the sessions were the sessions were difficult, um, and he had, you know, he was the same. You can tell he played at such a such a high level, just his work ethic and things like that. Um, but the club was just it was in a bit of a transition. Yeah. Just for several years. And, um again, you know, we actually did when he came in as when he got the job as interim boss, we did really well. Um and then the following season, like we we, we finished the season all right and then the following season we got off to a poor start and it just sort of snowballed. Um but I just I always remember that pre season under Jake. It was it was uh tough. It was, oh, just, uh, it was just it was crazy with like four sessions a day and stuff like in and in, in, in Spain so it was I always remember that pre-season it's probably the worst my body's ever felt um, but we obviously we obviously got really fit from it but it wasn't a great uh, a great memory that, that pre-season trip yeah and then when he leaves obviously do you kind of think were you kind of surprised when Steve Clark got the job like was there a bigger name than you thought would be coming to Kilmarma Oh, definitely, without without doubt, when when somebody like that gets the job, and the you know you heard stories of people that had, that had worked with him, it was it was it was huge, a huge appointment by the club, and one we were all really excited about. And he comes in, and obviously we know now kind of the way he sets up to play. But you were linked heavily with going to St Johnson. Do you remember? Was there any other kind of clubs looking at you, and like how how kind of did yeah. St Johnson the St Johnson thing come up? Like. I think that that was that was a, that was a wee while into into Steve Clark so the first season. Um, we 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 got into the top six. It was just a 
just a fantastic season, just the way he worked. He was just, he was, he was really, really good. And then the second season, the season we get into Europe, I had injured in the last pre-season game. Um, so I did something to my ankle, uh, came back and, you know, struggled to get back in because the team was doing so well. Yeah. Um, you know, just when you're not playing things, you get linked to certain certain teams. And that was one where, you know, I, 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 met, I met Tommy Wright um, Nothing, nothing was ever, nothing was ever agreed, and then just the way football works. I think I played the following week and got a run in the team, and then ever since then, you know, I got offered a new deal at the club, and you know, didn't look back after that. Yeah, when can a Steve Clark style of play? How is it? How hard is it to adapt to? Can I change it? Because basically, like Kamala had to completely change their game when Steve Clark came in because he sets up a certain way. Like, how hard is it as a as a winger in particular to kind of change that style? To be honest, it wasn't it wasn't difficult at all because he was just that good at telling you what to do. Right. We we worked on it every single day, and you know, I think some days I get sent a video. Sean Wright Phillips was talking about Mourinho, and, and he would say that you know, come a Saturday, it, it all of a sudden what you'd done during the week made sense, and it was a case of that where every week it was something different. You'd work on something new, whether it was playing against the three at the back, switching the ball, playing through the middle doing certain things and it was like on a Saturday I just thought we've been doing this since Monday this is this is the, this game's working out the, the exact same way the manager said it would and it was just it was just a great to be able to work under somebody like Steve Clark and you know the way the way he worked the way he was, I, I, I never ever thought about management until I worked with Steve Clark not that, not that I'm thinking of management I'm, I'm not but I just thought the way he works he keeps things simple he doesn't make things too difficult and he's got that aura about him where he, he doesn't get too involved with the players. He takes a step back, he, he takes training and walks off. He's, he's not, he won't get too deep with the players, but if you chat on his door and want a discussion, he'll talk all day with you. Yeah. And I really like that. I like somebody that, that you know, separates himself you know, from the players. You know, you know, if Steve Clark walked into this room just now, you know, he's still got that sort of head teacher feel that, you get so much respect for him. You don't. You, you don't want to do anything wrong. Yeah. What were your kind of memories for the kind of Steve Clark reign? Like, what were the kind of games that stuck in your mind? Like, it was just great days because he brought. He did bring a a big big change to Kilmarnock and got the get into Europe. Basically, that was unheard yeah. of. Basically, that was unheard of for Kilmarnock. Maybe three or four years before that. Yeah, I think the the, the biggest the best memory of it I've had at Kilmarnock was the last day against Rangers. Right. Just, just winning, winning that game, knowing you're in Europe, and the way we won the game with a late penalty, that was, that was huge. But there was just, there was points, times in the season where you're playing games, just going, you were getting into games, thinking we're going to win today. Like, and I'd never ever experienced anything like that morning where you just knew you were going to win. Like it was just a, it was a crazy feeling because we'd always, in years previous, would would struggle, but just knowing the way we, the way we'd worked all week, the squad we had at the time, the way we were playing that. You know, if we did, if we applied ourselves right, we're going to win games, and we went into some crazy, crazy runs. Yeah, and who were the kind of big players they signed? Like you felt like to kind of bring that stability to the team. Um, I think it was. I mean, not much changed uh, from the team that we had under Lee Clark. You know, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, Lee McCulloch. You know, I think he uh, Alan Power wasn't playing under the previous manager. Yeah, he brought Alan Power in. Um, you know, in the second season, he brought Malumbu, you know, Tishbola, but it was it was the same core of players that he had that the club had had, had the previous year. Um, so I think he just stuck with them, and when these boys were doing well, he offered a new deal so that the following season, everyone was still in contract. You had the same group of players, knew the way it worked, and he just kept a good core of the of the same boys that knew each other well and got on really well because it was a great. There was there's, there's there's different groups in every squad, and there was maybe three groups in that squad that really were close. But we all we all got on really well. Yeah, and we can have Steve Clark when it gets to the end. Can have Steve Clark's run like which uh, when did he first hear that he's going to Scotland? I think we knew you know after we knew that he was going to get some job that you know he'd, he'd done too well with Gomarnik not to get a job. So whether it was Scotland or whether it was Fulham or. I don't know who else he was getting linked with, he knew that he was probably going to leave. 
Um, so it was no, it was no real shock to be honest. Once he left, and um, would you say he was kind of the best manager you worked under? No, without doubt, definitely, yeah, without doubt. He moves on, and kind of during that summer, there's a big kind of selection of who gets the who's getting the job. We hear many names throw out, but the name that get, the name that gets mentioned is very, very surprising. Angelo Alessio. Mm-hmm. Was, what was what was the kind of stories going about about him before he get he got the job? When did you first hear that name? Again, I was on holiday, and somebody phoned me saying that uh, Angelo had got the job, and you know he he saw the the teams and. He'd worked with Conte, so I was excited and, um, you know, looking forward to his way of working. Um, and I. <laughs> what what kind of what was kind of pre-season like under him? We'll touch on the kind of big result that kind of makes that kind of signifies his run. But what was kind of training pre-season like to start with him? Very little. Very. The year before, Steve Clark was big on. You know, you would never just run. There would always be a ball involved. So it was, you know, feel as if you're running and it's just doing you in. But there was always a ball involved. So you always felt that it was, you know, you're you're really working and you're with the ball. So it was good. But uh, under Alessio, it was just a, a completely different way of of working. Um, you know, it works it obviously works in Italy. It's, he's been at bigger clubs than you know that that I've been that I've been a part of, but. It was just a, it was just a complete clash of ways of playing and ways of doing things. We, we just did very little. Um, it was more about rest and recovery, and I just felt we needed to work to get rest and recovery. Yeah, obviously the kind of one game that he'll probably be remembered by is the the return to Europe against the the Welsh team. Just talk us through that whole whole thing because that must have been a Bad, bad couple of days. Yeah, it was the worst. It was the worst I've ever felt playing football. It was just completely unprepared. Uh, probably underestimated them. And there's no two ways about which we should have. We should have won the game, and we had enough chances early doors in the second round. But it just really, it was just a, a real shambles of a of a performance. And you can't blame the manager for that. We were the we were the players on the pitch that night, but it was just uh, the way we the way we'd we'd gone from playing playing a tight counter attacking style to our full backs were almost in the corner flags and midfielders dropping centre half running through the middle. It was just a it was just a complete change, but that's no excuse. Um, it was just a real, you know, the worst night I've I've ever had in my career. And what's the kind of like the, does the fan reaction get to you? Like is it because it was pretty, bit, pretty bad, if you remember. Like, it was, the what? Sorry? The fan reaction, do, do you feel that when, when a result of that happens? Do you? No, I think, you know, I've, I've been, I can say that now, I've been around football long enough that, you know, maybe when I was 17, 18, that would have let that bother me. But I was, you know, what they're thinking doesn't bother me, doesn't doesn't affect me. I was I was down enough without having to listen to somebody else tell me I was, I was shy. So I was... I was I was I was disappointed in, in myself, so I didn't really need to 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 hear anyone else else's thoughts because I knew myself. I let myself down, let the team down, let the club down. And when after that result, like, do you is the pre, is there a lot of pressure to do well in the league? Like, do you do you find that straight away? Like we need to bounce, we need to kind of pick up on that straight away. Mm-hmm. Uh, we. We then had a few weeks until the Rangers game and the Friday before, I don't know who made the decision, somebody made the decision that we go back to the way we played last season. So you went from working in a, you went from working in a shape of two strikers playing around the corner to all of a sudden one striker and playing this kind of scene. You'd work, we'd worked all pre-season that certain way and then the Friday before Rangers, we, we went back to the way we'd been playing. Um, and we actually we actually did well that game. We're unlucky to concede late on. Um, so I think just I think maybe the manager, but give have to give him a bit of credit. He he realised the way if he wanted to play wasn't going to work, and and we went back to the way we'd we'd done it the, the year before. Did you have a good relationship with Alessio when he was here? Yeah, I did. I um, I got on well. I didn't have 
any run-ins with him. We, he, um, you know, he offered before he left. He offered me a new contract, and um, I, I got on absolutely fine. He, he's the manager. He's the boss at the end of the day. So you do what he tells you. And now I got, I got on okay. Though. And where did you kind of hang went wrong? Was it that result, or was there a few other things as well that kind of happened? Nah. Oh, there was there was loads of things that happened that you know are documented. You know the brothers and certain things. I'm not going to come out in here, and you know there were certain things that happened that people weren't happy with. And but that that result happened, and then he went on. He won Manager of the Month, and two months yeah. later, he you know we were sitting in third position. Um, Winning games, grinding out. We weren't playing all that well at the time. We were just grinding out wins. It was, it was really, really strange. And then we just saw, you know, just the whole the whole atmosphere around the club just uh, really took over in the last couple of weeks, and we we struggled to get results. And the manager, the manager paid the price for them. And it's not nice. You don't, you don't, you don't like. Yes, you're the players. It doesn't matter what happens behind the scenes when somebody loses their job. It's it's not nice, and I think he was really surprised. And you, you don't want to see that, but I think uh, change change was the right thing. And who comes in? Like Alex Dyer gets the job. Do you feel that that was the right person to get the job? Yeah, I think so. I think he de- he deserved it. He knew he knew how to get his you know back to the you know I hate harping on about how it was under Steve Clark, but. It was a way that it was still mo- the majority of the same lads, and it was a way that we'd found worked in the league. So why why would we why would we go away from that way of playing? So we we I say it was the same boys. There was a lot of new lads, a lot of foreign lads that were in. So the manager tried his best to to try and shore things up, and um, we had a few good results, and then obviously COVID happened, and the season was ended abruptly. Yeah. Obviously, I'll touch on your international career quickly because you also played with the Scotland under twenty ones. But Trinidad and Tobago is that? How's that coming about? Like, just talk us through how you how you're kind of eligible to play for them and kind of developments. Like, are you going to get a cap? Uh, my grandpa was born in Trinidad, and right. his his mum and dad were in the navy, so they were docked over there. So oh, right, he's, okay. he's, he's got a Trinidad passport. Um, and it came out a few years ago and I didn't really do anything with it and then it was actually a pre-season trip and we were just I was sitting one afternoon with Boydie and he said uh, oh, what's happening with that I said oh, I, don't, I don't really know he said you want me to phone Big Marv Marvin Andrews I said I yeah. phone him so he straight on the phone to him and he's asking he goes right here you go and chuck me the phone uh, and I'm talking away to him he said oh, what's happening with it? so I told him the story and then a few days later the manager of Trinidad at the time, he he phoned me and you know just asked whether it could happen. And I still, before I was actually named in a squad uh, for Canada uh, to play Canada just before uh, the virus, right? Without really knowing whether the paperwork had gone through, so I don't know whether I was just going to train and and try to link up because it's it's just a difficult process because it's third generation or second generation. I don't really know how it works. It's quite. It's quite difficult. He he didn't he never had a um he actually he didn't have a Trinidadian passport. All oh, right. He just he was just born there, so it's just that I think it's quite tricky in that sense to to try and get the paperwork done. So I still I still don't really know if it's happening. There was meant to be games in October. Um, the Concacaf, uh, like the Nations League, there. Yeah. Their uh, their group was just announced, so it's quite a. It's quite a nice group. It was Bahamas and stuff like that. So really, I just really wanted to see whether I'm going to try and really try and make it happen. And if not, then I gave it a really good shot because it would just be a big great experience. Yeah, best of luck with that. That would be that. But just, just as well, like obviously Steve Clark was a, as is still the kind of Scotland manager. Like, do you never think that he could be chatting the door? I think I, obviously I need to do better. I need to, you know, it's, I don't know, I don't know. I, I actually got asked that recently. Uh, one of my my wife's uh, cousin, he's a mad Scotland fan. Um, I said, how, how can you, you know, how can you shut the door on your international career in Scotland? It's, you know, still, there's still time. And I don't know, I just, I think, you know, I'd played 21s and I'd never really 
you know, to, at the end of the day, I don't deserve to play for Scotland right now because I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing well enough on the pitch. If I was scoring goals and doing well, then I had my call up. But so I just think that they showed interest. So why, why wait about it? It's, it's an experience that you know. It's I, think, I just think it'd be brilliant to, yeah. to play international football, and that was the international football that seemed available at the time. So yeah. I really tried to really try to make that happen, and again, I don't I don't know if it is going to happen, but if not, I gave it a go. Brilliant. Uh, we'll touch on kind of the start of the season. Like, how do you think you've kind of started? We'll talk about the the goal in a minute, but just how do you think you've started as a team? Um, I think we've done okay. Um, I, I think we've done better than okay. Results haven't really shown that. In most games, we've been competitive. I think the first day against Hibs and. She won the game against St Johnson, but a couple of stupid mistakes, and maybe only the Rangers game second half have been poor. But other than that, we've actually played okay. Um, done really well with the ball and stuff like that, but just haven't, haven't with things flashed across goal and hadn't put the ball in the back of the net. And then that all the game against Dundee United, things changed. A few a few chances went our way. We had two up front. We we looked more threatening. Um, and I feel we really needed that because if you'd get into the international break without without a win, having had playing well, you know it's, it's you're in for a long season. If you can't win when you're playing well, it's going to be tough when you're not playing well. Yeah, and would you say that was kind of the goal against the United was the best goal you've ever scored? Uh, I pro- probably there's one against St Johnson, the, the one where the goalie shanked it, put it in a plate for me from quite far out. But yeah, I remember that. I, I think. Anyone that knows football, it's just that it's amazing what happens when you dink the goalie. It's yeah. just it's that it's that like international rule. It's just it's just such a good feeling dinking the goalie. Everyone everyone loves to see it. Everyone likes to take the piss out goalies. So I'm allowed to swear actually. Right. Takes it. He takes the he, just taking the chipping goalies is just a great feeling because they they just get so annoyed at it. Um, and then to do it. Again, that comes down to no fans. If that's nil nil, or if we're losing the game, I don't know if you do it. If there's fans there, because if that if that doesn't come off and as many as it doesn't a lot of the time for me, but over the bar or straight into the goalie's arms, you're getting dogs abuse for doing yeah. that. So just it was quite a relic. We we're, were three nil up at the time. Three nil, three nil up at the time. Yeah. Um, I was actually I just came on, so I was actually still quite tight. I didn't really fancy. Slewing one on the right foot, so I just thought I'd take a bit of pace out and dink it. And lucky enough for me, it came in. So that no, was it was amazing. This the sort of reaction to that goal was really nice. Yeah, and as well as that, like you're just saying there, like how do you see Coman as a club now, like compared to when you started started out with Coman? Like how do you see the clubs kind of changed? Um, I don't, I don't know. we've obviously had success recently. Um. But I still don't. I, I don't know. I, I still again going back to Steve Clark. When he, even the second year after we made the top six and we're doing really well, he says the first priority of this club is to stay up. Yeah. Once you stay up top six, and then the way it worked out um, in the league, he said, "Can we get to Europe?" So I think I think that's still the same. The league the league is really competitive now. It's probably the strongest it's been. Yeah. Minus Hearts. Yeah. Um, so so I, I still feel that. That's it's the same priorities. We stay in the league, and then you go for top six. And I think it's come on. It's, if, if we don't, if we stop thinking like that and thinking we're above our station, we're better than what we are. You can see what's happened. With like, like to Partick Thistle and teams like that. Yeah. That you need to you need to stay in the league first and foremost. And what's it like as well? Like just not with playing without fans. Obviously, you miss that. You miss the fans there, but do you? You obviously know, can you see basically you're kind of play, you're in the part, you you're there, you see what's going on. Like we're just watching it on the television. But how how big an impact is it having no crowd? I think I, it's just it's still a strange. I know we're five six games into now, but it's just it's a weird feeling. You, sometimes I think more chances are taken. You, you, you maybe do things in the ball you wouldn't normally do. There's nobody screaming at you from five yards to, you know, if you're under pressure to kick it long, you might try turn it out. There's just times where you maybe take that half chance. Um, and I think even for the likes of, you know, for us and, and teams against Celtic at home especially, it's more difficult for them because we can drop an extra 10 yards deeper. And yeah. You've not got, not got our 
hands, screaming to get up. You know, that they're there to watch you attack. But when they're not there, you can. You can just sit off against the better teams even deeper than you normally would. There's no, there's no real reaction to get forward. So I think it makes it more difficult for Rangers and Celtic that we can drop so deep. But obviously it helps up, helps up as well. We're not going to go toe-to-toe to teams like that. But it's just, there's, many, there's loads of different factors that are, that are a lot different. Yeah. Are you all right closing us with quite fire questions? Who would you say is the best player you've ever played with? Uh, oh, quite fair. That's not really quite fair. Probably Eremenko and then Boyd is a finisher. Eremenko and Boyd. Uh, best player you played against? Oh, uh, Stefan Sesson Young played against Sunderland in a pre season game. And he was just his low centre. Do you remember Sunderland, the guy, Stefan Sesson Young? Yeah. Remember him, he was, uh, I just remember the time thing, how good is this guy? Just so just so 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 good with the ball at his feet. I, I, he, he's one that sticks my mind for some reason. Uh, favourite ground? Favourite away ground? Tynecastle. Tynecastle. A lot of people say that. Is it just because of how compact it is? Yeah, it's just like really on top of you and then the ball goes out for a throw and they're just just they're just they're just, they're just right there and to be honest, it's been a it's been a good hunting ground for us because we've won quite a lot of games there recently. So that's always that's always quite pleased. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is a kind of interesting fact about yourself that none of the Command fans will know? Interesting fact. I enjoy fly fishing. Do you? Not very good, but uh, I got into that during lockdown. Did you? Uh, Brilliant. Uh, Favourite. Favourite pair of boots? That I've ever had? Yeah. Probably... I don't know. I, I, liked, I, mean, I used to wear the old Mercurials and Nike ones. The ones that they try and bring out now, but they don't look as good. I always remember the old... Well, there was always a boy, there was always a boy when I was younger that would have the... You know, the, when they first came out, the, the real pair. And it was yeah. always... 120 quid. Now there's three times that. It's crazy how much that. Uh, and what would you say is your kind of favourite film? Favourite film is... Oh, it's a tough one. I quite like Matthew McConaughey. I like Lincoln Lawyer. I quite like that film. Uh, I watched a good film the other day. Uh, Dark, Dark Water or something. Mark Ruffalo. I like Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Deep water. I think it's deep water. Deep water. Uh, that was that was really, I like I like I like Matthew McConaughey and Mark Ruffalo. Is it Mark Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo, I like yeah. Those two. Yeah. And we'll close in a golf question. Uh, our favourite course we've ever played that. Uh, ever played, ever played. Enjoy. I have to say, I have to say Royal Train because that's where I play, but I enjoy I enjoy a day out at Loch Lomond. I think that's it's so different to, to anywhere you usually play. You're just you open the gates and then you're just you're just in a different feels like a different world. So I like that I like the the experience you get at Loch Home. Brilliant. Rory, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on, mate. I can't thank you enough for a, for coming on the show and best of luck for the new season. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. very Thanks much, much, mate. Cheers.